Hi, I'm Exo. This video is going to cover the Roland Sound Canvas 55 sound module. Let's start by explaining what that is, just in case you haven't heard of it before. In 1991, Roland put out a general MIDI sound card uh, called the Sound Canvas. It was uh, preceded by the Roland MT32, which was an external MIDI module that was reprogrammable. But there will be a video all about that one coming later. Uh, this video will be about the Sound Canvas. This was a sound card. It was somewhat backwards compatible with the Roland MT32 in that it did have the instruments that had come with the basic MT32 included with it. Now, what makes it different is it was not reprogrammable like the MT32 was, whereas the MT32 could have sounds uploaded into it, creating a custom library. The Sound Canvas 55 was set when it came out with the instruments that were built into it. Uh, reading through about it and researching for this, I uh, noticed that it mentions jingles in the early 90s uh, being produced on the Sound Canvas 55. Uh, it's interesting that it was used not just in gaming, but also commercially as well. They were not cheap when they came out. They were fairly expensive cards. They were not common. Now, for the purpose of DOSBox, it is emulated using something called a sound font. A sound font file, or an SF2, contains all the instruments and how the instruments were played uh, for the emulator to try to emulate the card as best as possible. Now, there are more than one sound font for the SC55 out there. Different sound fonts tweak them slightly differently. Uh, maybe the reverb is a little bit different depending on the sound font you use. Maybe... Um, the gain, there's a lot, all these variables that go into it have to be programmed into the sound font. Now you do have limited control over some of these variables through the comp configuration file that DOSBox uses. Um, now, when we first started using the Sound Canvas 55, we had a fairly knowledgeable staff member who's no longer with us that took the time to vet out all the sound fonts available at that time. And the one that we're currently using is the one that she had decided was best for the project. Um, it's something I've been meaning to look into myself to make sure that nothing new has come along since then. But I gotta say, for what we have, it is pretty cool. Uh, it sounds great. Let's go to a game that we know. Let's go to Doom. And we're gonna start at first, and we're gonna listen to the first level, Episode 1, Mission 1, with a Sound Blaster 16. Minimize that. This is on Sound Blaster. It's probably the most common way people have heard it. You let it kick in. Okay. Now let's play the same game, same mission, but with the Sound Canvas 55. Right off the bat, there's a lot more stereo involved in this particular mix. It's crisper. You hear it on the snare quite a bit more. It's You hear a distinct snare instead of a... If we go over to uh, Doom 2, we can also hear... Um, I'm not going to do both of them this time, but we'll jump right over to the sound canvas. The drums have a lot more distinction to them. that before I get caught playing Doom. I'm going to end up playing that for half an hour if I don't stop now. Uh, the goal there, though, uh, is hopefully to help you hear that distinct sound. Now, not every game will specifically say Sound Canvas 55 when you fire it up and you go through the sound settings. What we're doing is looking for games that support General MIDI, and the General MIDI that we have chosen to emulate is through the Sound Canvas 55. 
Let's go ahead and take a look here and see if looking for particular games here that have pretty well-known soundtracks to them is we'll probably jump over to one of like the King's Quest games Shadow Warrior is not a bad one uh, 3D Realms games though never struck me as um, quite as well composed and they didn't have a lot of distinction to the different sound cards comparatively. I think I just saw... Let's go to Leisure Suit Larry 1. This is the SCI remake. We'll go to the DOSBox version. I picked this one because we have a lot of options here. Uh, for the VGA version, we've got the Sound Blaster, the MT32, and the Sound Canvas. And then on the EJ version, you can even drop all the way back to the Game Blaster. Uh, in this case, let's start with uh, Larry 1 with a Sound Blaster. Okay, now we'll do the same game, but with the Sound Canvas instead. There we go. I don't know if this will carry through through the video quite as well as it sounds in person, but you, I can hear a lot of distinction. I'm hearing multiple instruments being played and layered in together versus uh, kind of a flat sound that you get from the sound uh, blaster. Now, when I say that, I'm not knocking or criticizing the sound blaster. That's what I grew up with, and I tend to have a healthy nostalgia for it. As a matter of fact, when I'm playing some of these older games, uh, even though it sounds better with the sound canvas, it's not uncommon for me to choose to play with what I knew growing up. And that's one thing we try to do with the pack. I've talked about this with EGA, VGA before. We don't present the games only in their best version because best is subjective i remember at one point we had a game called alley cat and it was in really monochromatic cga but we found that once we got the tandy version working uh, it was much more colorful it looked so much better so we switched to it and almost immediately we got a lot of requests saying hey can you bring back the cga version of alley cat that's what i grew up on so since best is totally subjective in this case especially when dealing with nostalgia and for the sake of preservation, presenting it in, in as many ways as possible is beneficial. So, we add the Sound Canvas 55 and therefore General MIDI support simply to create an option that otherwise might not exist. And a big part of the fun is discovering which games it sounds best in. It's not uncommon for people to drop into our Discord and say, okay guys, um, what's the best sound type? Uh, you know, and that comes from a paralysis of choice. When you look at that last one we started with Leisure Suit Larry, and you see four different sound cards for the EGA version to pick from. That's, you know, can be overwhelming if you're not sure where to start, if you don't already know what all the different acronyms and sound card types are. And so part of this video and the video series here, uh, based on sound cards, is to help demystify what they mean, where how they um, relate to each other. A cheat sheet for Exodos is generally the top choice is the oldest card and the bottom choice is the newest one. Now, keep in mind I did not say the worst to the best because it is subjective. If I start Larry again, but this time I go to the EJ version and I use the Game Blaster. See, I, I personally, I love that version. Um, and I didn't grow up that. I didn't have a Game Blaster, but it just sounds like an old MS-DOS game. Uh, and since we're at it, let's go ahead and fire up the MT32 version to see how it compares. Now, in this case, it may be the best option for this game because Sierra actually, at the time period this came out, 
in 91 was using the MT32 to compose all their soundtracks, uh, specifically for their adventure games. Now, MT32s can take a little bit of time because they're loading the sound font, the, the sound bank, so. Now, what I hear there is, like the Sound Canvas 55, I'm hearing a lot more layered instrumentation. I can hear specific instruments rather than it sounding like it was all just kind of mushed together into uh, one track that's being played back. You'll notice uh, when you, if you don't hear it over the video, if you download the pack, you'll notice that there's a lot more stereo with the MT32 and the Sound Canvas 55 in that this instrument's coming off the right one, this other instrument's coming off the left one completely. And that's something that they can do because since it's playing each instrument individually, uh, I believe the Sound Camp 55 had 26 uh, channels it could play on with the upgrade to it having 28. And so that's up to 28 or 26 instruments that it can play simultaneously. That allows it to choose. Do I play them 50-50? Do I favor one side or the other? Do I only play on one side or the other? Whereas with the Sound Blaster, uh, it can, you can have stereo, but it's not specifically playing a different instrument simultaneous to other instruments. Uh, hopefully, this rundown gives some idea of what the Sound Canvas 55 is, how we have chosen to emulate it uh, for the Exodus project, and of course, once you have Exodus, when you come over to your playlist, you can come to Games with Sound Canvas, and you can see all 554, I believe, not achievements. It is 549 games that we currently have that will run with the Sound Canvas 55. And again, I encourage you to experiment. Launch the game multiple times, listen to it different ways, see which one speaks to you. And uh, if it really sticks out to you, then let us know. Uh, one of my favorite things about the Exodus Discord is when people pop in and just talk about using the pack. For better or worse, uh, sometimes the things that people complain about lead to the biggest changes. But more often than not, the positive stuff leads us to realizing, oh, people are enjoying that a lot. Let's look at that and see if we can't make it even better. Or find more sound cards we can emulate or whatever we can do. With a project like this, it can always be improved. And uh, a big part of figuring out how and where to improve it comes from community feedback. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.